yeah. So this one is mine. You can't have this one, but we've got five others just like it. This is a, a really special project that's near and dear to my heart because I got to work with Paul himself on it. And um, for a few years, I, got, I had the idea in my head that we were going to build, I wanted to build an exact replica of the oldest guitar that we could that Paul made so people could feel what it was like to be back in the early days when he was hand making guitars. And uh, this is the, this is the, uh, this is an exact, I mean, as exact as you can get replica of the first guitar, they call it the Frampton guitar, the first guitar that Paul ever put birds on, which is, um, you know, to kind of show the love that he has for his mother and her passion for bird watching. So it's a really cool thing whenever I went to, to Paul to talk to him about doing it, because I knew this was going to be kind of one of those that was, that was iffy if we could do it or not, because Paul likes to continuously get better. And to go back 40 years to a guitar that was built in 1976, um, that was kind of a, a tall order to ask Paul to get on board with. What is this thing? Why is it sitting in front of me? <laughs> Let's talk about it. Did you didn't answer I'm my pretty question. Pretty excited. You're excited. Yeah. You're going to reproduce some things that we would never do again. So the first thing he said was, "But can we put new pickups in it?" I said. We can put new ones in it, but they're gonna replicate the ones that were in it whenever you, whenever you built it in your, uh, your old place. And uh, he's like, damn it, he didn't wanna do that. But talked him into it because I think he got on board with the coolness of the project. Handmade for Peter Frampton by Paul Reed Smith, April 1976. So I had a 1953 Les Paul at the time. This was the first one I made that I liked the way it played better. Yeah. And I'm wow, there's something here. The, the way this was carved is that a little more needs to come up here, a little more here. At that time, I had to string them up before you finished them because otherwise I didn't know how the neck carve was. I had not learned yet how to carve a neck perfectly without ever stringing the guitar up. It's for my mind, I had to feel the strings on it to be able to yeah. to carve it right. So the deal was we had to make six of them and that's about how many I wanted to make. I really wanted to make more because I think they're gonna, people are gonna want these, but we have six of them. Now we have five because this one is mine. Um, but Paul had a lot of, lot of, you know, his hands in this thing with Paul Miles and Tina and all the people in the private stock division to make sure that this thing was exactly like it was. And you can see from the all mahogany body, and it's a Santana body style. Um, and this was kind of one of the first guitars that had the, the violin type carve on it around the edges. Um, you know, he was looking for his place on what he wanted to do for inlays, and he kind of threw this thing in here, which kind of, uh, which obviously went into the Santana model pretty much permanently. Um, it has an American mahogany neck and a Brazilian rosewood fretboard, which is, you know, kind of a dream combination with a mahogany body, the purity of the mahogany body, mahogany neck glued into it, and a, and a, and a Brazilian fretboard. Um, it has the badass Leo Kwan um, bridge. Um, we had to get new saddles made for it because all the, the, the saddle, the bridges that we found um, that are the actual type that were in it, all the saddles were just demolished, you know, from being used. So had Paul Miles and the crew there um, went through, you know, I helped them find a bunch of the bridges, but they went through the trouble of getting the saddles remade and so this thing could intonate right. One cool thing about this that I kind of, I didn't realize until maybe after the project got started, and I don't know why it just didn't dawn on me, but these, these tail pieces were made to be wraparound, but Paul wanted it to be a through body uh, string up. So even though it's wrapping over, you can see the slots where the string's supposed to go in and, uh, and, and, and tie off onto the bridge. 
but Paul wanted it to go through the body to get this, the maximum amount of sustain out of this thing. So some really cool stuff with it, you know. I mean, <laughs> like, it's just a beautiful guitar, and uh, and it's, you know, it's all mahogany, so it has that tonal characteristic to it. Um, it's got the, the pickups, so go back to that. The custom, they're, call, they're we're calling them custom LTs for custom low turn, and he he actually went through and told them how he wound the pickups back in the day or the pickups that were in it and, um, and used the same wiring circuitry. So this thing is, is legit back to 1976 when he built this thing um, basically by hand. Uh, volume, tone, three-way toggle to go between the pickups. Um, and then if you notice the, the, the most prominent thing on this guitar is the headstock. I mean, obviously you don't see this on Paul Reed Smith's anymore, but this is the, this is the headstock that kind of sort of evolved into the Santana headstock, the, you know, the old school kind of PRS headstock. So if you kind of clip these off, clip a little bit of this off, you kind of end up with that, with the, the vintage -y looking headstock that you find on a lot of the, uh, a lot of those guitars. These are sh original Schaller tuners, you know, and I'm sure Larry's gonna have some killer pictures of this thing on there, but these feel so much different than Paul Reed Smith, you know, phase threes or phase twos even, but they, they're really nice. I mean, obviously Paul picked out the best tuners he could because this, this guitar was going into some pretty, pretty amazing artists' hands and he wanted this thing to be right, but, um, it's also got a bone nut, you know, that's, that's kind of a thing of the past, sort of, especially for Paul Reed Smith with him making his own nut now. Um, it has the original inlays, the, the, obviously it's the original because it was the first one, but this is the original eagle that ends up turning into the private stock eagle down the road. They made this thing look exactly like the original. I mean, it's inspiring to grab it because you think, yeah, it's cool to have an old guitar, you know, Gibson does it every day. They build replicas, they build, you know, um, you know, the R series and all that stuff. And, you know, everybody's building custom shop guitars that harken back to the old guitars. But like to ha actually, this is really a first true dead on replica of a guitar that he built, especially with the headstock and everything. But to, it's inspiring for me because now I can think, you know, you kind of close your eyes and you kind of think, man, this is this is the first guitar Paul really wanted out there that that he took to artists and felt like it was something that he can be proud of. I'm surprised the guitar still sounds as good as it does, but if you have that much headstock angle and you're using good parts on the tuning pegs and the nut and the bridge, at the time this was the best bridge you could buy. Yeah, I thought it should be neck all the way to the front of the nut and all the way to the heel and this was the beginning of that too if you look that neck starts right there and it ends right there and it didn't slowly transition <coughs> i wanted it to be neck all the way to where you played and all the way to where you played and a lot of necks start to become headstock around the second or third fret yeah. they start to become heel around the 14 or 15th fret i thought that was unacceptable this is where it all began this is a truly inspirational guitar and the feel of it doesn't really feel like a Paul Reed Smith of these days. I mean, you're getting something really special that was the precursor, you know, what, what Paul started with to build on and to end up in 1985 opening the company and having a, you know, the, car, the neck carve that he had on the Custom 24. I mean, this is, this, you can tell there's, there's things to it that, that stuck with it, but it is a different feeling neck and it feels, feels really good. I mean, and having the 24 frets out here feels like an SG in ways, you know, like you got so much neck out here to, to access and, and, and it's joined right there at the 23rd fret, 24th fret, and uh, just feels, just feels good. And like I said, the most important thing to me was that it was, this is a, an exact replica. I mean, everything that we could do, you know, other than going and finding like old pots and stuff, but the specs on the pots, the specs on the tuners, the bone nut, you know, 
everything about it, the pickups were made specifically for these six guitars to sound like what that guitar sounded like back in 76. So if you can imagine, um, you know, taking this guitar backstage to some of those shows and sneaking it in to, to the venues to get it to these artists that eventually got Paul put on the map as a guitar builder. I mean, they, sh they saw this 20-year-old kid essentially bringing him a guitar that played like this. I mean, this thing plays like a dream, and to think that he'd only made, you know, a few guitars that made it through his process before this, and to be that good at it, you can definitely tell that there's a lot of talent there, you know, and, and I'm, I'm honored, I'm blessed, I'm privileged, but, you know, obviously the main thing is I feel honored to be able to do this project with Paul and uh, for everyone to be proud of it and to, to see that, you know, this thing, it took about a year and a half to get this done because there was all kinds of tooling. Paul actually had to like hand carve one of the necks and they had to, you know, put all this thing on a computer to be able to rebuild it to be an exact replica. I feel honored to be, you know, to, for Paul to trust us and to, to do this and to honor, you know, his original, original plan. So hope you like it. If you love these, I mean, it is a private stock guitar. It does come with a private stock price, but it's worth it. I mean, this is an heirloom piece. I mean, this is like going back 42 years to when this thing was built and feeling what the beginning stages of Paul Reed Smith guitars was all about. So check them out on our website. We're going to have the other five up in the next day. Well, they're probably up by now, by the time we should get this video done. But I will say, don't underestimate the feeling that this guitar gives you. Because, you know, if you, if you, you know, you can play an old, you know, a replica of other brands and it's great, but this really feels like, you know, I can get inspired. I'm going to play this a lot at home because I feel like I want to play certain music on it, you know, and it feels, it just feels so cool just to have it in your hands to know that that history is there. So check it out, moreguitars.com really passionate about this thing and uh, excited for some people to really get their hands on a, on a really true replica of history here. So check it out, moreguitars.com. I've said it enough. I will talk to you later. Hopefully talk to five people that want to get their digits on this thing and really have a nice piece. So moreguitars.com, you can call the number, you can live chat with us, you can email, you can call. We'd love to talk to you, but these are going to, you know, these are amazing guitars and, and uh, we're happy to have them here.